Hello and welcome to the second video of the FP3 chapter integration. If you've got time, pause the video now and either try and write down all of these results or if you don't want to do that because it's in the formula booklet, write down where in the formula booklet they are. I will kind of do both. I'll put the results on the screen. Here we go. Here are all of the results and a quick review of where they are. These three are in the formula booklet in this section, FP3 integration. These are there as well, FP3 integration with A is equal to 1. And these you can find using the P3 differentiation with a slight tweak. Uh, this one here, ooh, the FP3 differentiation I think has tanch to sec squared. So we're using these still as we work through our P4 recap methods, trying to relate these to the sorts of functions that we've been using. So a lot of the background ideas in this video, I hope you've seen before, applying them with our new results as well to the hyperbolic functions. This is the first one. I mentioned this in the previous video. Here are the formal patterns that you need to be able to recognize, or it's very useful if you can recognize them. This one, a function under its own derivative will always lead you to a log of that function. And this one, function in a bracket with a power multiplied by the derivative of that function. Increase the power on the bracket, divide by it. And if you can get something matching this exact form, you can write this down directly. And if you get something with this exact form, you can write this down directly. So these two patterns, very useful indeed. Here are some examples of this specifically. So sech to the power 6, tanch to the power 1. Here, what you need to recognize is that sech x tanch x is the derivative of, or very close to the derivative of, sech x, which you can then put with a power 5. So I've split the power 6 here into a single one and the rest of them. Now how this helps is the derivative of sech x gives you minus sech x tanch x. So to balance that, I can put a minus outside. Now we've got something of this format. This is the exact derivative of this, so I can write this. So that is equal to minus sech x power 6, and that has to be divided by 1 over 6. Sorry, divided by 6. And there we go. Second one, this one, if anything, is a bit easier. You can see directly sinh 2x is the derivative of cosh 2x, or close to it. So if we, uh, um, yeah, let me write it out. Um, cosh 2x power 5. You wouldn't always need to write these out to make it explicit how you've arrived at this. But if you differentiate cosh 2x, you get 2 sinh 2x, which is not exactly what we've got. So to balance that, I need a half in the front to deal with that too. Now this thing is the exact derivative of this, so I can apply this pattern. So that is equal to a half cosh 2x to the power 6. Oh no, I need to divide by that power as well, so that's actually a 12. A half from here, and divide by the new power, 6, as that comes down. Okay. The third one is one we've done a couple of times already. This is the integral of sinh 
x over cos x, which follows this pattern. So we get the log of cos x plus c. And the last one also follows something very close to this, because sec squared is the derivative of tanh. And having the 2 here, if I differentiate all of this, that 2 doesn't make any difference, because you know a constant differentiates to 0. So I've got the log of 2 plus 5 tanh x. And if you differentiate that, you get something very close to this. The function goes on the bottom of the fraction. The derivative of the function on the top would have been 5 set squared, but I don't have a 5 here, so I need to balance that with 1 fifth. So here are examples of what I hope you've done before applied to the hyperbolic functions. Other things that you need to be able to do in this module from P4 are using identities. So a few examples of this. Tanch squared x. We haven't talked about integrating tanch as part of our standard intervals, but you can transform tanch into, oh, I hope I get this right, 1 minus sec squared x. And sec squared we know is equal to tanch when we integrate. So that is x minus tanch x. Let's see. For this one, normally when you're dealing with a cos squared, you would turn that into a cos 2x. I'm going to do something very similar. Remember at this point your Osborne's rule, and that might make it easier. This is equal to the integral of half, oh, it's a plus half cosh of 2x, but my x is actually a 3x, so that becomes a 6x. And if I integrate that, I get x over 2 plus 1 over 2 with the 6 is a 1 over 12 sinh 6x plus c. This one is a very useful one because it's an example of something that you can do with other small odd powers of sinh and cosh. So there's a little trick here, and the trick is to split this into a sinh and then an even power of sinh, so in this case a squared knowing that you can connect sinh squared and cosh squared with the identity cosh squared minus sinh squared equals 1. So sinh squared here can change into a 1, no, sorry, a cosh squared x minus 1. And you might think, how is that any easier? I've now got a mix, sinches and coshes, but that's okay if you expand this out, it will become clear why. Sinch x, cosh squared x minus sinch x. And using what we've talked about before, this thing is the derivative of the thing in the brackets, if you imagine the brackets squared here. And if I had more of these to expand out, say this was a power 4 coming from a power 5 here, then there would be a squared on here, expand out that bracket, and you would have a bunch of different cosh powers, and each one of them would have a sinh 
which would follow that same pattern as something in a bracket multiplied by its own derivative. So this is quite a nice sneaky trick for small odd powers of sinh or cosh of x. Because then one by one you can apply the pattern that this here has come from 1 over 3 cosh x cubed. And then as you go through that will apply for each term except the last one and the last one will be a direct integral. So I can integrate that directly to cosh x. So that's a nice trick to be aware of. Final thing in this video to be careful of is substitution. Now there's two bits of substitution I'm going to look at in the next few examples. And the first is exponential definitions. For sine and cosine, sometimes when you get stuck, you're stuck. But for sinh and cosh, sometimes when you get stuck, just remember you know what the exponential definitions are. There will be times when it's just easier to throw the definitions in and integrate the exponentials. But when I say substitution here, I also mean your normal substitution using a different variable. And I'll do a simple example of that. We'll look more detailed into that in the next video. So here, if you've got something like this and you look at that, you might think integration by parts. And probably, yes, you could do this with a couple of integration by parts processes. But in this case, it's just going to be easier to substitute in the definition, the exponential definition of sinh. So you get e to the 3x over 2 minus e to the x over 2. And of course, you can integrate that very easily. And that is definitely quicker and easier than doing integration by parts twice. Final example, sech x we can substitute in because we know that that is 1 over cosh x, which we can then make 2 over e to the x plus e to the minus x which actually doesn't look easier, or it doesn't look easier to me, because I can't split this very easily. If this was on the top, yes, I could split it into two fractions, but it's not, it's in the den denominator. So I'm going to just play around with this. First of all, I don't like having two exponentials here, so let's multiply everything by e to the x to get rid of this. So that would be 2 e to the x over e to the 2x plus 1. And you might think to yourself, it's still not really looking very nice. But at this point, I can apply my more normal substitution. When I say substitution, you might have thought, let's take a u. Let's make u equal e to the x. And then du by dx equal to e to the x, so du is equal to e to the x dx. And I've got e to the x dx in my expression, so this I can change into 2 over e to the 2x is u squared, and e to the x dx is du. All of that work to get something that still doesn't look very nice, but is one of our standard integrals, or very close to it. 1 over x squared plus 1 is here. This is arc tan. And I've got a 2 instead of a 1, but I can just put 2 arc tan. So this is equal to 2 arc tan 
u plus c. But obviously I shouldn't leave that in terms of u. Reverse our substitution here, u is e to the x. So that becomes 2 arctan e to the x plus c. So that's quite a few techniques from the P4 work that we're using in the FP3. And one of the challenges here is that you need to know all of them and figure out which ones are useful. Because if you try to implement the wrong technique, you're going to get into a, a bit of a mess. So part of the problem solving is deciding which of the P4 or FP3 or mix of techniques you need to solve which problem. And that just comes with practice. So at this point, practice is what you can do using the questions from exercise 4b in the textbook. A quick summary of what we've done so far in terms of the methods, standard integrals from the formula booklet, known patterns from P4 work, identities, and don't forget Osborne's rule when you're doing these, uh, substitutions both of the definitions for the hyperbolic functions, but also in the more general sense of using a dummy variable. And we'll look at more complicated substitutions in the next video. Perhaps I will see you there.